Our project is on robotic analysis. My name is Pedro Chapiano. I'm part of Team 6, also with Rodolfo and Carlos. I will be presenting a brief history of link analysis. Avinci and Archimedes were the first to start to analyze linkage and see the great potential of this understanding. Archimedes used geometry to study the early work of linkages, and da Vinci was the, was the one to bring his innovative energy toward machines and mechanisms. In the mid-1700s, um, James Watson discovered the Watson linkage that he used for steam engines, which you can see in the diagram that the linkage creates a figure eight, and which were growing in importance in factories and in early cars. He realized that if you could transform rotation of a crank into a linear slide, then the steam engine would be more efficient and it would allow the use of different cylinders for expansion and condensation of steam. This led to the start of the study of linkages and the importance of understanding the geometric motion that inspired J.J. Sylvester to calculate an exact straight line from rotating crank in the 1800s. Lux, Kennedy, and Bird Burmester were the first to formalize, the, analyze, and synthesize the linkage system using descriptive geometry. In the mid 1900s, um, the use of computers were introduced to solve the loop equations of linkage and determine its dimension from a des desired function. That was created by Fr Frudenstein and Jean Sanders. This is um, Sanders and this is Frudenstein. The method, the method he used, um, they used were kinematic equations from the design of planar and four bar linkages to achieve a spe specified relationship between the input parameters and the configuration, configurations of the linkage. RE um, Kuffman combined the computer ability to rapidly compute the roots of polynomials equations with a graphical user interface to unite um, Frudenstein's techniques with the geometrical method of Lulux and Bermingston, and for and form the Kai, um, Kinsing system and inter, an interactive computer graphic system for um, linkage design. Nowadays, analysis and design for um, systems that appear in robotics, machine tools, and cable drive systems. Using two decades of computer techniques, CAD, MATLAB, SOLIDWORKS, and so on, are able to solve these systems. In order to minimize the cost and to maximize efficiency, we choose the simplest mechanism possible to accomplish the desired motion. This is why synthesis is an important way in designing mechanism because it allows us to control the output motor for a specific input motion. Now, Rodolfo will be presenting analysis of the project. Thank you. Hello, class. Hi, everyone. My name is Rodolfo Guevara. I will be talking about the analysis of the slider crank. A slider crank is shown right here in this image. The analysis of a, of a slider crank is actually uh, made of a, the analysis of the position of every link, as well as this coupler link, QS. Also, it deals with the analysis of the velocities and the analysis of the accelerations. For the position analysis, we were given the R2, R3, R4, theta1, and theta4 which were 30 inches, 30 inches, two inches, zero degrees, and 90 degrees respectively. Our unknowns were theta two and theta three. The input that we had to, uh, that we, we had was R1. Because of this, in order to do the analysis, we have to use these loop equations, which is R1 cosine theta, plus R4 cosine theta equals R2 cosine theta plus R3 cosine theta, as well as for the sine. Okay. For our position, in order to solve those loop equations, you have to square both equations and then add them together. When you do this, 
you end up getting this type of equation, which is A cosine theta three plus B sine theta three plus C equals zero. Right there, you can see that theta two is already neglected because we cancel theta two when we square the equation and then add them together. The A, B, and C variables that you see in that equation are, both, are all given by known values. And then after we have those um, uh, variables, we can then solve for theta three. And then once we solve for theta three with this equation right here, we can solve for theta two. In uh, Excel, I was able to input R1 into these equations and form some type of um, equation where I could test out the R1 links, uh, inputs, and then I could see which link values would give me real numbers. Once I did this, I highlighted, I highlighted those values with green and then solved for the first two closures of uh, theta three and then the first two closures for theta two. With this, we solved the joint displacement, which is the position analysis. After we are solving for the position analysis of the point S, which is attached to the end of the coupler QX. For this, we use these two equations, which is the X position and the Y position. The X position is R2 cosine theta two plus that coupler link, which was in our case, the same length as R3, which is 30 inches, and times the cosine of theta three plus beta. Beta was given as well, and it was 20 degrees. And then same thing, we just plug in those numbers for Y, and then we were only uh, told to find the X and Y positions for one closure, which I did here, and then I graphed them, which we ended up getting this uh, curve uh, for the S position. Now for the ana uh, velocity analysis, we would take the loop equations and take the derivative of them, where we get these two equations. And then after this, we would solve this as a matrix, where you would then have these, this matrix times the, un the unknown, which is omega two and omega three, equals this known variable. Now with this, we would then take the inverse of this matrix and then multiply it by this matrix and that would give us our two values. Okay. For the acceleration analysis, you would, it's basically the same step all over again. We would then take the derivative of the velocity equations, which would then give us our acceleration equations right here. And then same thing, we would take the matrix of these to solve for our alpha two and alpha three. Once again, we would then take the inverse of this a matrix and then multiply it to this. And that would give us our acceleration values. For application, we decided to make the slider crank of a, of a landing gear. This we made in SolidWorks, which we then have the animation. And right here you see the motion, which were with the restrictions that we had for our theta two and theta three also with the velocity of our R1 that was given, which was uh, 10 meters per second. Thank you. Now Carlos will be talking about the synthesis of the product. Hello class, my name is Carlos. I'm going to talk about the four bar mechanics synthesis. For the problem, they gave us three positions of the coupling. We got A1, A2, A2 and B2, and A3 and B3. So to know how our how our four bar mechanism is going to work, we first need to find our A, A initial or B initial so we can form our mechanism. How we get our A and B initial? So first we use a matrix solution where we have to put our, right, our given numbers, A1, X, A2, X, and we get this formula, and then we got A initial and B initial. So, so our A initial is going to be at the origin and of B initial is going to be a 62 and 9 and 10 1. So now that we have our position of the initial, of initial A and B, we need to know the length of each bar. So we can consider these values as a vector, and we use the formula for the vector length to know and get our 
length of each body. And we got that our frame is going to be the largest one, it's going to be about 63 inches. Our small bar is going to be the first one over there, it's going to be 10 inches. And our other two is going to be the middle covers, 50 inches and 47 inches. So how do we know? How do we know which mechanism we're using? We can use the Russell form of rule that give, give, tell us to sum the smaller frame and the largest coupler with the two middles. If the smaller and the largest coupler is less than the bigger one, we are going to have a grand rubber magnitude. That, that's exactly what we get. So it's going to be a type one mechanism. As we know, if the smaller coupler is going to be at the, uh, at the coupler to the frame, it's going to be a crank rubber mechanism. So we have that the crank can rotate 360 degrees, and the other cup and the rubber can only be moving within the range. So, as we know that we, with the help of SolidWorks, we can put our position of A1 and A and B2 and B1, and get our simulation of the four bar mechanism. As we see, it never to it never collide between other sculptures. So this is our position for A2 and A and B2, and the next one is going to be our position for A3 and B3. The next slide shows a little simulation that we did with SolidWorks. As we see, neither of the position of A and B collide with any other frame of the of the mechanism. So Nowadays, we have several applications for our crank rocker mechanism. We can have an oil drill, we can have a ratchet, and a windshield wiper. When this small crank just moves and rotates, and then it's going to give us the largest rocket to move up and down so we can move the tools of each mechanism. So here is a little animation of an oil drill. That's not the one we choose for our applications. So that's going to be all our presentation. Thank you for your time.